church in these unprecedented days. Uh, and so I want to invite you to do a couple things today as you join us for worship at your home. Um, I want you to invite you to get in a comfortable chair, find a place where you can watch the service well. I want you to gather your family around and uh, y'all y'all all be together in one room just as we would if we were in the sanctuary today. And I want wherever you're at, whether you're in your bedroom, whether you're in your living room, uh, where you are today, look around. Uh, this is your sanctuary. And today there will be holy moments and holy things that take place in the room that you are sitting today because God is with us and God wants the most for us. And He, as we seek to engage him, he promises us that he will be there with us. So as we were, if you're used to worshiping in a sanctuary this morning, uh, you would stand and you would sit and you might uh, close your eyes and worship or you might raise your hands. Or you might say, amen, if the preacher does a good job, which you just never know. Uh, but today where you are is your sanctuary. And I want you to practice uh, worship uh, and engage God's word just as if you were sitting in the church building today. I want you to turn off any other devices and try to eliminate as many distractions as you can. Uh, where you are today to be able to focus in on what you're seeing uh, and enjoy this time, take advantage of this time. We're going to have some worship and we're going to pray together and we're going to hear from God's word. Um, and so I want you to be in that frame of mind today. Um, and I want you to be able to focus and lean in to what you are getting to view from your home today. You, as uh, one thing I posted uh, last night, you get a pause with the pastor when you don't like what he's saying or if you want to discuss something with your family, you feel free to do that. Uh, but I do, at the end of service today, give you some things to think about and for you to look at with your family uh, during these days as maybe many of you are at home together uh, and not being able to go to work or working from and so this morning, I want us to open uh, in a word of prayer as we uh, transition and ready our hearts uh, for worship. So let's pray together. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your presence today. Dear Lord, we know for many of us today that it's, it's kind of awkward, uh, it's different, it's new, maybe it is a little challenging. We have faced many challenges this week and even to have service today. But dear Lord, we, as we've always say, we want to push aside the busyness of life and we want to focus on you today. And so Lord, would you help us to, to see you and to sense your presence in our home sanctuary this morning. Help us to engage you and to uh, put aside everything to focus on you this morning. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can still meet. We thank you that we still have the ability to worship and to hear your word. And today we pray that your presence would just be made known among us today. And you would speak to our hearts and our point of need this morning, we pray in the name of Jesus. This morning we know it's going to be a little bit awkward, but we want you to sing along with us as we'll be able hopefully to see the words this morning.
It's not when God will eradicate, or not if God will eradicate this virus. It's just a matter of time. And so I want to encourage you to follow uh, the instructions and the, uh, the advisement that we are receiving from uh, the president, our governor, and we are doing the same even as within the church. And so we want you to uh, hear from us that we want you to follow those same things too. Uh, not be in fear, but to be vigilant and to help uh, in the spread of this virus. Um, for, our, for our schedule for right now, we are going to uh, can continue having services, but they are going to be online. Uh, and from this point forward, uh, we hope to have a Wednesday night Bible study that will be sending out more information about this week, uh, where we can have a group Bible study together from our homes. And so, if I don't, if we don't have your information, uh, uh, email or at least a uh, phone number where we can text you. Please uh, send that to the office or to myself, and we will get you added to that information. Um, as for our Easter preparations, we don't know how long this will last, and so we're going to wait uh, another week or two before we make some determinations about how we will proceed with our Easter celebration and some of our events that we have. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind and keep your ear tuned for information through Facebook, uh, text, uh, and through our, uh, through our Facebook Messenger feed. Uh, today, we, we want to encourage you to do a couple things. One, whatever you are, wherever, or, let me say that again, from whatever platform you are participating in worship today, we want you to like, we want you to comment, we want you to share, we want you to subscribe so that you can stay informed and that we know uh, what is going on with you and who's watching. Particularly, I would like for you to uh, comment something, uh, if you're watching from Facebook particularly, uh, comment and let us know that you're watching and, uh, and who you're watching with and, and what you're thinking. Uh, today is an experiment. I've never done this before. Uh, most likely you've never done this before. And so there are going to be some kinks and there are going to be a learning curve and there are going to be some things that probably will be different next week as we continue and try to do this better and better. If there are any things that we can help you with in that way, would you please uh, contact the office, uh, uh, send, call me, send me uh, a text, uh, what you think we could do better, and we're going to do our best uh, to make this uh, more and more uh, accessible and applicable for you during these days. Lastly, uh, during these days, we know that things are different. Many of you are working from home, and maybe many of you uh, have just been sitting home. I don't know. Uh, all the possibilities are endless of what uh, your situation looks like today. Uh, but we know the Lord is with us, and we know the Lord is going to bring us through, and he's going to help us overcome this situation. Uh, but if you are a regular attender of our church, a member of our church, uh, we want to encourage you as you are able to continue to send in your uh, ties and offering to the church. Uh, you can mail that in. You can drop it off at the church. Um, you can contact me to make sure I'm here at the church uh, to receive that. Or also we have available online giving, which you can go to our website at LC First NAS. That's L-C-F-I-R-S-T-N-A-Z dot org backslash online Dash give. Or if you just go to our website, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a place where it says online giving. Click that and it will lead you through that process. Uh, and all that will continue to go to fund the mission of our church and our, to meet our, um, our needs and the needs of the church to continue to spread the ministry and the gospel of Jesus around the world. Uh, and so uh, those are kind of some instructions for today. If you have any further questions or comments or needs, please, please contact me or the church and let us know how we can help you. And so as we do each and every Sunday, we pray an offering prayer together. 
And so I want us to pray that prayer again today. Uh, we aren't taking up uh, offering normally like we do, and you aren't giving like you normally, uh, avenue that you normally do through plates. And, but we want to pray this same prayer because we believe that it is true whether we're in the building or whether we're at home. And, and so as uh, you see the, the prayer on the screen, uh, let us pray this prayer together this morning. We pray that we shall be good and faithful stewards, giving the first and best of our time, talent, and money, sharing with others the life Jesus has given us, and the giving and serving from a willing heart. Lord, where our hearts and hands are closed, open them. For our reason Saul is weak, strengthen us. We have freely received. Now let us freely give. Amen. Let's continue in worship this morning. Thank you. 
USA, and you are a God of worship. And you are a God who speaks to our entire world and loves our entire world and wants the best for each and every person who lives on this earth. And Lord, you want to make yourself known through this time. And we, you want us to draw closer to you during this time. And so, Lord, may that be our heart's desire today. Or Lord, may that be the, our heart's desire during each and every one of these crazy, tumultuous days that we live in. And Lord, it's not if you're going to rid us of this disease, but it's when. So until then, Lord, we still proclaim you are God. We still proclaim you are our Savior, our sustainer, our provider, our overcomer. And you'll bring us through. And you'll bring us through with a more deeper and clearer and more tangible relationship with you than we've ever had before. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. We pray in the name of Jesus. We prepare to hear from the word of the Lord this morning. Hear the special music. It's uh, what the Lord is. And we say, Holy is your name. 
to use everything that you have to bring him glory and to draw attention to himself and for you to see him through that man. I think that's a very important reminder for us today. Well, today, uh, as we jump into the word of what I believe the Lord has for us today, I want to remind us that it is the first Sunday of Lent, and despite all that we are going through and that has transpired over the last few weeks, uh, the Lord is still on his throne. The Lord is still ruling and reigning this earth. And this is still a time during this Lenten season for us, whatever we have chosen to do fast or add to our lives during this Lenten season, he doesn't want us to stop now. Uh, and we shouldn't stop because things have changed. Uh, there have been several things that have caught my attention uh, over Facebook, particularly this, this week, uh, that I want to draw your attention to. And one of those, as we think about Lent, is somebody posted that uh, something like, I knew I wanted to give something up for Lent, but not this much. Uh, and we have had to give up a lot and change a lot of things in our lives the past couple of weeks. Uh, but we can see it as a bad thing, or we can see it as a way for us to continue to draw close to the Lord and to practice uh, fasting uh, and intentionality to get them just a little bit closer to Jesus, as we've talked about. And I want you to continue to do just that. There have been a couple other things that I've seen on Facebook that I thought I wanted to mention to you this morning. Some of them I've shared or reposted on our church Facebook page or other places. One of them was a saying or a comment that says, With church doors shutting across America, it's time for us to show that the church has never been about the building. And those words cannot be truer than they are today. It's a fun little saying, but I think it holds a lot of truth today. That the church was always meant to gather so that we could scatter. And that we could be spread across uh, our community. And so that is more true today. And, and a similar phrase uh, someone posted this week, churches are being closed. Or, let me just say that again. Churches are not being closed. Buildings are being closed. You are the church, and you remain open for business. You remain open to being the hands and feet of Jesus. And I want you to remind you that, uh, of that truth still today. Those are some things for us to consider and to contemplate, and I want, us, I want you to do, those this, do that this morning. And I'm going to return to some of those the points of those phrases in here in a minute. But this morning, I want to turn our attention to uh, the gospel passage for this morning from John chapter 6, starting at verse, at verse 25. And the great thing about uh, where we are, you can look that up on your phone. You may have the Bible in front of you, and maybe you can put that on the, on the screen again this morning. And I want you to check this one. Let's read this passage of scripture together this morning in John chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 24. It says, Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor the disciples were there, they got into the boat and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. Verse 25, When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do? to do the works God requires. Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Verse 30. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. 
Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have sent me, you have sent me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down to heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my God, or for my Father's will, is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The word of the Lord this morning. I want to share just a few things about this passage this morning that comes to mind and that I believe are, are very poignant for us today. Of course, this whole passage revolves around, and even Jesus feeding the 5,000 comes to this point where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He has been doing all that he's doing to get to say that one phrase, and for us, and for the disciples, and for his followers, and for everyone who hears this this morning, for us to realize and to know that he is the bread of life. He is our sustainer. He is our comforter, and he is our provider. But Jesus wants to remind us that though we look to all these different things in our world, it seems like the Walmart shelves are empty and we can't get all the groceries that we want. Paper goods are scarce and we have to stand in line to get them. Uh, there are question marks about jobs and futures and schools and graduations and summer plans and all these different things. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be considering them. But what Jesus is trying to share with us through this passage of Scripture, and as he declares to us that he's the bread of life, he is trying to say to us that he should be number one in our lives. We should be looking to him, not to Walmart to provide everything we need, uh, but that above all those things, that the Lord is going to provide for us everything that we need. He is going to one way or another. There's going to be miraculous stories that come out of these days, how God has provided. I mean, I can't even begin to explain what government officials and what city leaders and what state governors are doing uh, in our midst is not, nothing short of of the grace of God. They think they've come up with these grand ideas that, hey, there are these days we're not going to shut off people's electricity or water if they can't get the bills. We're, we're going to try to provide help where we need some. They're trying to tell us, just as God tells us, don't fear, don't believe this myth of scarcity and, and try to go out and buy everything that we can get our hands on and not leave some for others. They're telling us not to do that in the same way that God is saying, I am a God of grace. I'm a God who provides. I'm a God who cares for you. No matter your, your beliefs or your political opinions, I believe that when we see our government officials and city officials making these choices, they are nothing of their own idea. But they come and remind us that God is at work in our world and he is a God of grace. And these ideas don't come out of the blue. And they didn't 
uh, start from one source that we can name and give credit, except God himself, who shows us and has exemplified us what grace is. And in those ways, we should look to the Lord and, and put our trust in him and recognize him as he is our one source, the true bread, who provides our true needs and will provide for us every need that we have. So let me ask you a question this morning. As you consider these days in this past week, have you spent more time in prayer and engaging the Word of God over stressing and worrying about this virus? These days when you've been able to be maybe away from work, and maybe things have been a little bit Laxed as far as expectations for us and our, at our home with our kids. Have we spent more time in prayer and in taking advantage of these times to be with our family and to be the ones who help our friends, our families, our neighbors, our loved ones bring focus during this time, not about what is going on in our country, but what is going on hearts and in our lives and our relationships with the Lord today. If you only know that answer, I'm not telling you to tell me what you think. But I am trying to help us understand this is exactly what Jesus was trying to do is to help these disciples understand. Help these followers understand that we see through this passage asking him these questions and, and looking for these signs. And, and Jesus says, you know, you are tracking me down. You are running me down, trying to figure out wherever I am because uh, of all the things I've done or because of the words I've said. But you have, you've been tracking me down because you have eaten the bread and you, and you drank from the cup and you've seen the miracle and you've been a part of the miracle. And he's saying, is that really what your belief and your faith in me is really based upon? Just because of the things you see me do, or the things that we're even expecting him to do. Is our faith and our trust and maybe even your seeking him through uh, watching this video today, is it based upon what you want to see God do during these times and how you want to see God eradicate this virus today? Or is it based upon God's love and His grace and what He has done time and time again in our life? That I want to testify today what I believe and why I trust in God is not based on what He's going to do but it's based upon my pursuits, his presence in my life, how he has shown me his love and how he's directed me and helped me in ways that have nothing to do with anything tangible I have today. But most particularly with everything I feel in my heart today. And I feel those same things for you. Jesus warns his followers as he asks them this passage, what is your faith? And I ask that same question for you today. Jesus is at work in our world today more than he's ever been before. And we need to stand upon that truth. And we need to proclaim that truth. We might not get to be in the quote-unquote church building this morning to stand in hand in hand and arm in arm together, but we see each other online. And we have the ability to encourage each other and to proclaim that news to our loved ones and our neighbors and our friends and to continue to be a source of encouragement and help for them during these days. And that's how we put our feet, our faith to work and put feet to our faith. The third thing I want to share with you this morning is just a question that the, uh, that the followers of Jesus ask him. They, they ask Jesus this question, what must we do to the do the works God requires? Read that again. What must we do 
to do the works God requires. I want you to think about that a minute. What must we do during these days? Maybe of us, some of us stuck at home. Maybe of some of us out of our normal routine and away from the normal uh, group of people that we live life with and do life with. But when God is calling us to do the works he requires of us to do. And this is a question we all need to ask ourselves in the days to come. In these unprecedented, uncertain days. What must we do to do the work God requires of us? Jesus responds uh, to those who ask the question in the passage. And he says, believe in me. Believe in the one who sent me. That I am the bread of life, the sustainer of your provider. And we can do that, and we can proclaim that, and we can say that, and we can know that in our hearts. But Jesus was telling these to a people, a group of people, not in, not in a church building. They were on the roads. They were in the cities and in their communities where Jesus was. And he looked at pro, across the cities where they were, the places where they were, and he said, are you going to believe in me? That's the first part. But then he said, go and, and do. Look around. <clears throat> Put your faith, your belief to work. For us to believe and trust Jesus, it means that we need to do more than stating our belief or showing up at church or showing up at church online. Even if we get to dress in our pajamas and don't have to take showers to get to church today. What do we need to be doing today. I believe it means acting out our belief. Acting on the reality that Jesus is our provider. And Jesus is really more important than the things we see on TV and the things that we don't have or the things that we can't get a hold of. That the church is, is not a building that is being closed. But the church remains open to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I believe God is even as you are at home today, and even as maybe some of you can't leave your homes for good reasons, and maybe some of you can, I believe God is calling us to do a couple things. And I want to, I've made a list of some here that I want to share with us this morning. And this is really what I want you to hear today and for you to consider is how can you be a part of what God is doing in our world even these days? One, I think you need to be keeping in touch with your friends and your family, your neighbors, and especially any elderly uh, that you know in your neighborhood or your family that, uh, that don't need to be out and about. Uh, these can be lonely times. And so we have phones. We have the ability to stay in contact with each other. And we need to do that. We need to take advantage of the time we have. For those who can't who can get out of their houses and who can't go to the grocery store, we need to be looking for people who can't and saying, uh, can I go get you some things? Do you need any medicine? How can I help you for those who can't get out? I think... We need to be positive and we need to be encouraging. I know we're spending a lot of time watching news and looking on social media and posting our reactions and uh, all these uh, good memes and things that we keep seeing about these days. I want to encourage us, if we're going to do that, be positive, be encouraging, be uplifting, because many people see us. Another thing that we can do is we can look for... Uh, people in our neighborhood who could use some help. Maybe we can get out in our neighborhood and take a walk and maybe see people who haven't gotten their mail or who haven't put their garbage cans up or haven't been able to put them out or, or even pe people in our neighborhood that need help with their yard work. And if we can get out of our house and we can bring those things and 
within the restriction and guidelines and guidelines that have been mandated, let's do them. If we're able and it's appropriate, have people over for dinner and be an encouragement to one another. Uh, I think a lot of us are home with our families, maybe more than we ever have been if, uh, if you're working from home. Take advantage of this time with your family. Uh, do things that you don't normally do together. Eat at the table together. Watch movies together. Take walks. Play with your kids. Read the Bible and pray together as a family. These are all things that we can do to keep each other going and encouraged and pushing forward. And I think, lastly, we need to be a people who trust God and who don't just tell people that we trust God, but that people see us doing things that help them know that we trust God. We don't need to act in fear, but we do need to put our trust where it belongs, our hope where it belongs. And we need to believe that it's not if, but it's when God is going to eradicate this virus and get things back to normal. It's not it, it's when. And so we pray that way and we act that way and we live that way and we help that way and we invest in people and we serve others that way. We give up our resources believing that the best days are in front of us. And so today, as you are home and you're hanging with your family and you're watching movies, your house has been made a sanctuary today. I believe as much as I felt the presence of God and I pray today that not that God would just show up here with me and I would be able to sense his presence, but we pray today believing that God has shown up in your, in your families and in your homes. And I believe God is showing you ways in which you can be the church and which you can act uh, out the faith that you have in Jesus, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So the presence of the Lord is with you today. He's in your midst. Are you hearing him? Are you more aware of his presence this morning? Are you aware of how he is directing you and guiding you today? I want to pray a blessing upon you this morning as we end our time together. And I know that the Lord will protect you. He's going to guide us. He's going to get us through these days. So let me pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we've had to share together today. I thank you for those who have taken the time to stop the scroll and to, and to hear your word and to hear your message for your people these, this day and for these days to come. Lord, these are not about us. And these days are not about how you are trying to punish us. But dear Lord, I believe you're trying to do something through these days that would remind us of your goodness, remind us uh, of your faithfulness to us, and remind us that you are our true bread, the place where we put our ultimate trust in you, and not things, not our jobs, not our, our governments, not our city officials, uh, not in uh, the ability to get all the groceries we need, but ultimately in you. And so, Lord, today we pray that you would provide our provide for our needs. If there's any out there who have needs, Lord, we pray that they would reach out to us and we would be able to help them in, in any way. And Lord, would you give us uh, and prepare us for the needs that need to be met. Lord, I pray that uh, as you are working to eradicate this virus, Lord, that your will would be done, that you would loose your will upon uh, this earth as you have already done in heaven. And Lord, that you would uh, give us our daily needs and we would learn to trust in you and trust in you for you. 
Lord, I pray for protection over, over your people this morning. Those who have chosen to believe and those who have not yet. Lord, would you keep them uh, away from this virus? And Lord, would you do the work to eradicate it? Um, Lord, we want to pray sooner rather than later that the Lord we pray you will be done. And so Lord, uh, would you uh, make yourself known to my friends this morning that they become more aware of your presence, more aware of how you want them to live out being your hands and feet, uh, whether it's in their home, whether it's through their home, or whether it's in their neighborhoods. Give them direction and help them to meet the needs of your people this day. Go in the peace and the love and the faith of God today. Thanks for joining us.